Just about to stick the radiator back in the van, so let me show you what it looks like close up. I pressure tested it, some of the welds are leaking as I've shown. Gone back over them. They look a bit like crap. Um, the initial welds where it goes smoothly didn't leak. But then once they start going to shit, they uh, they just get worse and worse to be honest. So these just went porous as soon as I finished them. And then uh, this metal is something, some sort of cheese and it melt. it's much easier than the radiator metal. And I just struggled to get it to seal. And then this on the bottom, uh, it was fine other than that nook. It looks like crap on the top, uh, and it was difficult to get the uh, welder in there, and uh, it just kept getting worse and worse, and I was just forcing weld on it. And, uh, yeah, it looks like rubbish, but it holds uh, it holds fluid, so it's going in the van. Uh, it's got a job to do. It's not here to look pretty. Quite a busy day, but I didn't film too much of it because it's pretty bloody tedious. But uh, tomorrow is the Haynes uh, breakfast meet, like a once once a, a month breakfast meet. I want to take the comma. And after that, there's a steam festival in Yeovil. So I'm going to take the comma to that as well. So, uh, and I'll see if I get any cooling issues. I shouldn't. But, uh, let's check it all back together for now. Let me show you what's going on. So expansion tank is in. Uh, this is the fill level, which is marginally above the top of the radiator. Got this like degas pipe, so you can get airlocks at the top of the rad. Then it drops down here, feeds into the bottom of the radiator. Water pump pickup is there. This is the water pump feeding into the engine. Uh, I'm showing the other side. I previously had a pipe running along the top, getting the way seat belt, running through there into the top of the radiator. Um, I didn't like that because that was the highest point in the system, um, which actually meant I sort of had to fill it at two points. It was an absolute pain. Uh, so that pipe has now been remade at stainless. The thermostat on the Saab engines on the back here runs down under the manifold. Uh, Lovely bit of TIG welding, the rest of it looks like crap, into the radiator. Um, that uh, is an 0.9 bar cap. I put a washer behind the spring on it, so now we probably shouldn't pop till, if it pops at all, but it'll be like one and a half bar or whatever. But um, that'll let go much earlier. That may as well not be there now, that's what I'm saying. Uh, down here, that little screw, that is a bleed point. Uh, undo that, get air out of the top of the head, highest point of the cooling system on the engine. I've run it, and it seems to be all right. Um, but, of course, you've got to run it for a good few days before you notice anything's changed. I've also got the aircon unit in place. Uh, these here are the heater pipes for it. Let me show you them around the front of the van. That's where they are. Um, Mercedes or like a Bosch auxiliary, auxiliary water pump, not plumbed in at the minute. I'm going to have that on a switch and then that will feed the matrix. The heater matrix and there's the return into the bottom of the radiator. Before I chuck the covers on, uh, work still left to do loads, always. There's always going to be work to do. But uh, this is where the original Saab aircon compressor lives. A uh, couple of bolts here, there, and it'll go into, there'll be a space there and it would fit there. I can't fit that there because this is in the way. I was tempted to chop this out. And then I was thinking, do you know what? Let's just make a um, bracket which raises it up. Uh, so that's the what I'm going to do, so it's a pain, I've got to chuck this all back together and take it back apart again later, but that's the way it is. Uh, problem, not really a problem, but the it goes back here like the aircon compressor. And the air filter for the van 
is down the back somewhere. Like, I don't know if you can appreciate how tight it is for room in this van. Uh, previously, people have said things like, why are you put the intercooler under the van? Why don't you put it in the nodes? There is no nodes. There is nothing. There, let me show you the cooling system constraints on this van. So I just fitted this, obviously not part of the cooling system, but it is actually, to remove it in future, I will have to take the grill off because it is right there and that's where one of the bolts is. It is mega tight. So the way these vans get their airflow through here and here, and if you look through there, I don't know if you can see anything. I think this is a bit of a horrendous bit of video. This bit here, which is behind this grill, slopes down. Then you've got an open fist of air to do all of your cooling, um, which is nuts. Which is an absolute ball egg to deal with. Aircon uh, radiator is going to go up under there on its side. You'll see it all. I'll I'll explain it all when I'm doing it. Basically, it's tight for room everywhere, um, and you could cheat and put the engine in the wrong place, like in the middle. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep the engine where it lives, and I'm going to use keep the van as usable as it is. This is the space that I've got, and I've got to make it work. I've got a limited slip death. Which means no, I will not. It's impressive how slow they can they can run the engine. Well people just have these and keep them just look like this. How do they get them here? Drive up. On the motorway. A steam lorry. So is that a four cylinder steam engine? I just noticed this thing is actually four wheel drive. That's nuts. No idea what it is, other than it looks like it's got a big four cylinder petrol. A comma. Hell of a setup. So we've got the dog hanging nicely. The first thing I'll train my dog is we'll stop on the whistle. So when they're out in the field, if they scratch anything, we blow the stop whistle and immediately go to the Can I have an old bus, please? No, thank you. Some old commas. Wonder if they've considered putting a Saab turbo engine in it. Or maybe they actually want to use it. So these two are comma TS2s. The engine's called the Knocker. And I suggest you look it up online. It's basically a 
can't really see it, a three cylinder engine with six pistons, one crankshaft and then a rocker basically on the end of all the con rods. Um, I'll put a picture up, it's absolutely awesome. Some people ask me if the Comma Wanderer, the Comma PB, the van I've got, if that's got a Comma knocker in it. No, my Comma knocker is absolutely bloody massive, but uh, I wish it was, and if it did, I certainly wouldn't have sob swapped it. Let me tell you some other boring engine stuff. Come on over, come on over. So it's a 6V92, so a six cylinder in a V, 92 cubic inch per cylinder. This is a V6. Like a cubic centimeters is what like the Americans and oldie worldy British used to measure engine size in. So 92 cubic inch, that's about 1.5 litre. Uh, so this is 9 litre. And it's a two stroke. So this might be non turbo. If it is, it's just got supercharger, which is used for scavenging it's to got keep a it running. Supercharger. Yeah, yeah, so, of sorts. Yeah, yeah, sort of. What's the it looks like now? it looks like a supercharger because it's got to run. I shall tell you. <laughs> it's because there's no exhaust. There's no inlet valves, inlet ports. So to keep the flow of air going through it, you need a supercharger, a fan, a blower. Um, but this could be a T, a 6V92T, which means it would have a turbo as well. And if it's a TA, it's intercooled. But looking at it, I think it's just a non-turbo. You can see why she married me. Oh, yay. Yay. Rowena just said that's cool. Only because it's got like extra windows. Extra and windows, doors yes. On the back. Is it a J? I can, I can never remember what these are called. I didn't realise though the doors are more or less on the back. I've just said to Rowena, will people make money on this? Recovering old broken down vehicles. Mainly our own. Yeah, recovering our own. Yes. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Maybe we should buy one. I've said no, but Rowena wants to see all the uh, stationary engines. Can you talk me through the working bit of this, please? Wheels. Engine. And some steam. <laughs> some what? Steam. Steam. It is not steam. Steam engine. You said that's what we wait for. Pretty cool uh, COEs, these normally get called cab over engine, nice Chevrolet. I am a big fan of Rover P4s, and we have five of them. They're just so cool. No, there's P4s. That 95 means what engine's in it. Some of them have got 2.6, is it? 2.6, six cylinders. I think some of them might have three litres, and then some of them have got the two and a quarter petrol out of a series. Oh. Here's a Reliant, not a Scimitar, but a kitten. I know I'm going to be in the minority here, but I think these are very cool. Very quirky. Cool little A30 on what I reckon is a Suzuki SJ chassis. Guessing from the front spring shackles. And it's probably one of the only 4x4s about similar size to an Austin. Very cool. This is what happens if you have a tractor show in Somerset. You can't move for them. Yeah. Absolutely no idea what this is. But I think I want one.
uh, that's what you call portal axles. Can you see the axle above the fuel tank? And it drops down to each wheel. Okay, that was the Yeovil uh, Steam Fair. Pretty good, I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it, Rowena? Yeah, it was very fun. <laughs> I think that'll end it there. So long. Cheerio! <laughs> <laughs>